Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Honda's full-scale eVTOL gears up for first flight. Arctis raises $2.6 million for large, high-altitude UAS. And Samsung gains tailfold patent for a switchblade. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flights, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Honda's full-scale eVTOL gears up for first flight. Honda has outlined its clearest timeline yet for its entry into the world of electric vertical lift, confirming that its first full-scale eVTOL prototype will be finished by the end of 2025. The inaugural flight is slated for March 2026, marking the company's transition from years of under-the-radar development to a much more public testing phase. The update came at the Dubai Air Show, where Honda's eVTOL vice president and executive chief engineer Susumu Mashio said the appearance was thoughtfully timed after several years spent keeping the tech in stealth mode. While the company originally showed an eVTOL concept with an elliptical cabin profile, the full-scale aircraft appears to be trending toward a more constant cross-section. Both the subscale demonstrator and the Dubai fuselage mock-up reflect that evolution. Mashio said the final configuration remains open as the team balances cabin comfort with aerodynamic efficiency and structural considerations. Supplier selections are also still in progress. Once the full-scale prototype is assembled, Honda intends to begin remotely piloted flight testing in the United States around March 2026. Full FAA-type certification remains a longer-range target, with Honda expecting entry into service in the late 2030s. Unlike many others in the eVTOL market, the company seems to be prioritizing operational value over rushing into production. After the break, USAF Reaper drone crashes off the South Korean coast. Martha, you know, it has really been getting dark early lately. What are we supposed to do with our evenings now that it's getting dark by 4 p.m.? How about we work on a ground school course? Well, a really good idea would be for us to review our night flying course. And folks, it's a great idea for you too, especially since now we are offering 20% off all King Schools courses. Just use the code word PECAN to get 20% off through December 4th. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. USAF Reaper drone crashes off the South Korean coast. The Air Force has confirmed that it lost an MQ-9 Reaper drone to the South Korean waters on November 24th. The aircraft assigned to Kunsan Air Base was conducting what officials described as a routine mission when it encountered an unspecified incident around 4.35 a.m. near Maldo Ri Island. Reapers are long-range, unmanned turboprops built for reconnaissance, strike, and persistent overwatch. With a range exceeding 1,600 miles and near-continuous endurance through aerial refueling, the MQ-9 gives U.S. forces broad coverage across Northeast Asia. Its reach includes the Bohai Sea and Taiwan, roughly 800 miles to the south. Baikonur launch pad sustains damage during last liftoff. The successful launch of three crew members to the ISS on November 27th caused serious blast damage to the pad at Baikonur, Russia's only active site for crewed spaceflight. The launch was otherwise successful in transporting the two Roscosmos cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut safely to the station. A service platform is located within the flame trench at the Cosmodrome Site 316 in Kazakhstan. The building collapsed in the wake of the Soyuz MS-28 crew launch on the Soyuz 2.1A rocket to the ISS. The platform is integral to the preparation of booster launches from the pad. Horizon reveals plans to certify its eVTOL in icing and IFR. Horizon Aircraft has confirmed plans to certify its hybrid electric Cabaret X7 for both IFR and flight into known icing, two capabilities that remain well outside the scope of today's eVTOL operations. All weather permissions, especially Fiki, are rarely found outside a small collection of heavyweight helicopters, and for good reason. Exposed rotor blades accumulate ice quickly, degrading lift and stability while introducing structural and aerodynamic hazards. These risks routinely lead to operational delays and canceled flights, including interruptions to Canadian Coast Guard navigation support. New Glenn getting more powerful engines and other upgrades. 
Blue Origin announced that its new Glenn rocket will be getting new, more powerful engines along with enhancements to its structures, avionics, reusability, and recovery operations. The engines on both stages will have improved performance that will increase payload capacity and launch cadence, as well as reliability. The seven BE-4 engines in the first stage will have an increase of total thrust from 3.9 million pounds force to 4.5 million pounds force. The individual BE-4 engine has demonstrated an increase in thrust on the test stand from the current 550,000 pounds force to 625,000, with a further increase to 640,000 pounds force expected later this year. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Arctis raises $2.6 million for large, high-altitude UAS. Arctis Aerospace announced it raised $2.6 million from Version 1 Ventures, South Park Commons, Grad Capital, and several angel investors in a pre-seed round to accelerate the development of its large, unmanned aircraft intended to fly at 45,000 feet for up to 24 hours. Arctis said the funding will be deployed to establish one of the deepest full-stack unmanned aircraft manufacturing and engineering capabilities that will be built entirely in-house. The company builds its aircraft, manufacturing, and testing operations at its facility in Bangalore, India. The aircraft will be capable of carrying a 250 kg or 550 pound payload to provide real-time intelligence. Arctis notes that the high-altitude Earth observation sector has been limited by the high cost of satellites with slow revisit rates. The options within defense high-altitude long-endurance aircraft are prohibitively expensive, far beyond the reach of commercial operators. The company explains that this causes a gap because industries need frequent, high-resolution, on-demand data, but the existing systems are too expensive or operationally rigid. After these messages, Samson gains tailfold patent for a switchblade. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Samson gains tailfold patent for a switchblade. Sam Bousfield, CEO of Samson Sky, has been granted his eighth design patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and International Patent Offices for the switchblade flying car that he designed. This newest patent covers the design of the unique tail fold and retraction mechanism of the vehicle that both flies and drives. The mechanism is designed for convenience and works easily and seamlessly with the touch of a button in the cockpit of the vehicle. It enables the tail and propellers to retract into the body of the vehicle and fully protects all flying surfaces while in drive mode. The company believes that providing these safety features on the ground will help make the vehicle easier to insure. In addition, the design permits the switchblade owner to park the vehicle inside any standard garage and avoid adding hangar fees or other storage to the cost of ownership. Bousfield also noted that more patents are still in progress in the U.S. and internationally. Samson Sky's website shows the company has reservation holders in more than 50 countries, including all 50 U.S. states. An international version of the vehicle will be available in either left- or right-handed drive controls. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.